Hello, welcome to Literary Life and welcome to today's video, which is a book review of Chain Gang All Stars. Oh, this book, this book. For those of you new to the channel, welcome. The way my book reviews work, they will be spoiler free. I will give every book one to five stars. One star, I did not like the book. Probably didn't even finish reading it. Two stars, eh, it was okay. Three stars, it's a good book. I liked it. I'm going to recommend it to some people. And four stars, great book. I loved it. Going to recommend it to a lot of people. Then there's five stars. And those are those more rare books that just absolutely blow my mind. And I do want everyone to read it so we can all talk about it. And here we go right into this one. This, for me, five-star read. And I'm going to say, guys, it didn't start out that way. I actually, in the beginning, when I first picked this book up and started reading, it was kind of more of a meh experience. And I'm not sure if it was me. I'm not sure if it was just getting oriented to the story. But let's start with talking about what this one's about, because it takes some orientation to get into this one, because wow. Um, so we're sort of set in like a futurist, dystopian America. And I just say that because... Yeah, you just don't want to think this is the world you live in right now, but I don't think we're as far from it as we'd like to think. We're looking at the prison system. This book is going to explore so many themes, so many themes, and it's going to do it well. It's going to explore class difference and really power difference is really what this is about. You know, you have the affluent who have access to resources who have control and power over others, whether it's through the job market, whether it's through the housing market, whether it's through the prison system. And we're going to really hone into the prison system in this book. So we're going to get to see uh, capitalism. We're going to get to see uh, socioeconomic status issues and racial issues. But we're going to everything's going to be through the prison system which is really interesting because I had not understood the, how privatized and profitable the prison system is until my college daughter had me read a book she had read in college. And I started to Google and read more about the industry. That really brought this book home for me. That made this book hit hard because essentially what has happened is part of the prison system is we have an organization that has brought entertainment out of the prison system now. So prisoners can essentially sign up to compete in a series of battles. And when they sign up to compete, they are assigned or become part of a group of other prisoners that's referred to as their chain. And based on the number of battles you have survived, and I'm going to underline, bold, highlight, survived, because these are battles to the death. So like, think, what was that? Hunger Games, right? So this is basically Hunger Games in an adult population set in the prison system. I mean, they're battling to the death. It, it's gruesome, guys. I am going to give you a little bit of a gore warning or not. I'm going to flat out give you a gore warning on this one because it was a bit difficult to read in the beginning. So if you're super sensitive and you don't like a lot of gore, I would just be aware of that if you're going to pick this up. But it is so worth it, in my opinion. Um so they battle to the death, and as they survive a number of fights, battles, their rank level increases. And if they actually get to the point where they make it to the highest level, they are given a couple of final battles, they are freed. Freed. Allowed to just go back into the world. And I found this so interesting because I'm sitting here like, Good God. Okay, so you most of these people, you know, rapists, murderers, some of them are innocent, though. Some of them are innocent. And I'm going to touch on this here in a moment. But most of these people have committed horrific crimes at some point, right, that landed them in prison. And now we've had them for a number of years, not just survive the prison system, which, you know, most people know it's 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 not. Yes, they get meals and they get beds, but it also doesn't necessarily like create the type of humans we want back in the world, right? So you usually have a hardening, a locking in, a, I'm not, you're, it, the prison system innately, I, I don't even know if it can, I guess that's a philosophical debate, you know, you could have in a whole separate video or series of videos, but these people have gone through hell for years. Then on top of that, you put them in traumatic situations over and over and over, <laughs> we're just going to say, Okay, entertainment's done. 
back into the world with you. That part just blew my mind. But there was so much that was blowing my mind as I read this book that that was just one of the many. The author cites stats throughout the book. So his book, while it is fiction, thank God, technically fiction, because we don't have the show on television streaming, he's going to be citing like what percent of people in prison are estimated to be innocent, um, death row. He's going to be citing the statistics around the vulnerable populations, how they tend to be overrepresented, meaning they don't necessarily commit the majority of crimes, as we tend to believe, but they're more likely to be arrested and then charged and then convicted, right? So they are overrepresented um, as the criminal element in the prison system. And he will touch on all of that. And I thought it was really interesting the way you were kind of shifting from reality, true real world facts to this fantasy world, this dystopian world where all this is going on. And it made it, I think, more impactful and powerful and unsettling because you're like, yeah, this is this is true. Like, we know this is true. And if you're if you're interested in this, Google the the industry, the prison industry and how much money um, moves throughout that space between. Oh, it's it's incredible. But anyway, the other part that really made this book a five star for me that blew my mind was how it reflected society. Our ability to observe, our interest, and then our ability to to observe people's pain, people's trauma, people's drama, people having mental health issues and behaving in a way that we just in a way that is completely dysfunctional. And you have different reactions in the world to this drama, right, being presented. I mean, people are fighting and killing each other. And you have people that are absolutely appalled by it and are protesting. So they're actively reacting and trying to stop it. And this is going to take multiple points of view. And we're going to get to see some of the protesters' experiences and thoughts um, through the storytelling. You have people that are like, meh, whatever, don't really get into it, not my, not my thing. It's called something sports. It's like, it's intensive. It's it, The word is like, you know, it's a sport. That's how it's framed up for the show. Then you have the fans. And let me tell you, the fans, they are like streaming it nonstop, buying all the merchandise. They have the posters up of their favorite chain gang, all-star warrior I, I mean, it is so bizarre to see the the spectrum and then the way that people cannot just be interested and willing to sit and watch other people in a horrific moment of their lives, but actually hunger for it um, and want to see the violence and want to see um, people hurting each other. And I found this so unsettling. And I think the author just does such a brilliant job of rubbing that part of humanity in our face and saying, look at, look at who we are, look at who we become and look at how it plays out. And that for me was the big reason this book was a five star. So the thing I wanted to touch on too, you are going to get multiple points of view in this book. So you're going to get some of the fighters points of view, several of them that are um, in, even in different chains. And I thought that was really interesting. You're going to get points of view from some of the people that are part of the company that are putting on this show, um, this very profitable, making a lot of money show. You're going to see some of the protesters, like I mentioned. You're going to see the points of view of some of the fans, people that weren't big fans and become a fan. And, and just the whole the whole thing, you get so many different perspectives that it really just brought this to life and I think made the book a very powerful read. Um, and it's 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 been unsettling. It's really been unsettling, but it is definitely a book that is going to stick with me. So I would love to hear if you've read this book, your thoughts and reactions. I am going to put this one up for, sh- uh, for sale in my Pango shop. If you're interested, that link's below. Um, this is this is one of those books, though, guys. I could see this. This is the book that I could see in 40 years being in the high school like reading list. You know, your advanced literature, your more modern um, animal farm type book. 
I, this is one of those in my mind. Um, so would love to hear what everyone else thinks. That is it, as always. Uh, Wilhelm links below if you're just interested in purchasing the book. Not this copy, a brand new one. I got those links. But other than that, thank you, as always, for being a part of my literary life now. Let's go read some more books. Happy reading.